Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. First thing first, next week's video will be the monthly Q&A. So, please post your question in the comment section or in the Ask Dao Yi channel of the Dao Yi Discord or email me if you prefer to remain anonymous. I will do my best to answer your questions. Spring is coming to Montreal, finally. It had been a harsh winter with a lot of snow and prolonged cold weather. However, the weather has been gradually improving for the last couple of weeks. Hopefully soon, I will be able to practice in my backyard, and even better, I will also be able to shoot videos for the demonstration section outside. For the last couple of weeks, I have posted two videos about martial imagery concepts and practice, one each for Xing Yi and Ba Gua. As I have mentioned before, understanding the important concept of imagery will do wonders for your practice. Today, I will introduce the imagery concept used in Tai Chi. It is worth pointing out that Tai Chi has a totally different approach to imagery compared to Xing Yi and Ba Gua. Xing Yi and Ba Gua share a lot of similarities while Tai Chi imagery is quite distinct from them as well as more abstract. That's why I introduced Xing Yi and Ba Gua imagery before Tai Chi. Since you already have an idea of Xing Yi and Ba Gua imagery, it's time to introduce Tai Chi imagery, which is the most intangible aspect compared to others. Also, if the mentions of intangibility didn't make it clear already, I'd like to point out that Tai Chi imagery is an advanced topic, even more so than Xing Yi and Ba Gua imageries. To have a better understanding, you may need to watch it multiple times. If you don't feel like giving me views, you are welcome to download the video and watch as many times as you like. Also, with practice, I'm sure you will understand this video better. So, do not worry, just keep watching and practicing. Topics covered in today's video include first, Tai He Yuan Qi, second, Tai Chi imagery, third, practice of Tai Chi imagery, fourth, principles of Tai Chi imagery, fifth, misperceptions of Tai Chi imagery, sixth, demonstration, and seventh, takeaways. So, Without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Tai He Yuan Qi. In my video titled Tai Chi Stepping Like a Cat, I introduced a Tai Chi imagery concept that I developed by myself. According to that concept, there are three levels of imagery in practice there are Marco level. Meso level and micro level. The micro level imagery in Tai Chi is the overall guiding principle for Tai Chi practice. Well, meso level imagery is the specific guiding practice for specific practices such as stepping, silk reeling, body movements, and so on. And the Micro level imagery applies to specific movements such as dragon on the ground, rooster stands on one leg, and so on. So, in Tai Chi, different levels of imagery serve different functions and should be analyzed specifically. However, in this video, I will focus on the micro level of a Tai Chi imagery practice. So, what is the Tai He Yuan Qi? Simply speaking, Tai He Yuan Qi can be translated to the Great Harmonized Primordial Energy. I have explained Tai He Yuan Qi in two prior videos, Internal Style Concept 25, Nei Jia, and Tai Chi Stepping Like a Cat. Link are in the description. <coughs> tai He Yuan Qi originated in Chinese philosophy, 
which subsequent adoption in Chinese aesthetics, and eventually also in Tai Chi practice. Today, I'd like to explain Tai He Yuan Qi in much more detail compared to my prior explanation, since it is not only very beautiful but also very meaningful in terms of explaining Tai Chi practice, and thus deserving a detailed discussion. <coughs> The term Tai He Yuan Qi consists of four characters. Tai means great, He means harmony, Yuan means primordial, Qi means energy. Very often, Tai and He usually work together to express great harmony, and Yuan and Qi work together to express primordial energy. So, let's plan Tai He and Yuan Qi. Separately, in Chinese culture, the term Tai He or Great Harmony is used to describe a very advanced state. Philosophically speaking, Tai also means primordial energy in the universe or the energy that creates everything in the universe, and He means a state of energy. Both Tai and He. Work together harmoniously to create different things in the universe. Simply put, Tai He is the origin of Yuan Qi, and Yuan Qi is the result of Tai He, which reflects the ancient Chinese philosopher's explanation of the origin of the universe. Now, let's recall the term Zhong Yong. That I introduced in the Tai Chi stepping like a cat video. Zhong Yong was used by Confucian scholars to describe the state of a being. Commonly translation to constant mean, middle path, and so on. Zhong Yong, as one of the key concepts of Confucianism, has had a profound impact on Chinese culture. For example, it serves as a guiding principle for achieving personal, social, and political harmony through having the mind and the self in a state of perfect balance or equilibrium, which reflects the spirit of Confucianism and embodies many of the central themes of Confucianism. Zhong Yong and Tai He Yuan Qi are closely related. Zhong Yong is the state of Tai He Yuan Qi, or Tai He Yuan Qi creates the Zhong Yong state. I have also mentioned in some prior videos that the state of equilibrium in both tangible and intangible ways reflects the basic theoretical foundation of traditional Chinese aesthetics. In many Chinese arts, including painting and poetry, Tai He Yuan Qi, or the imagery expressed and represented by it, can explain their underlying philosophy and aesthetics. Tai He Yuan Qi has been the main theme in Chinese culture for thousands of years. Furthermore, Tai He Yuan Qi was also adopted by the Tai Chi scholar Chen Xin to explain the practical essence of the Tai Chi principle, which is a great application of the beautiful term Tai He Yuan Qi. Now, let me explain it in the next topic. Topic 2 Tai Chi Imagery. As I mentioned in the last section, I like Xing Yi and Ba Gua imageries. Tai Chi imagery utilizes a different approach at the macro level. In terms of a philosophical foundation, Tai Chi relies a lot more on Confucianism than Taoism. This is another important distinguishing factor in Tai Chi imagery compared to those of Xing Yi and Ba Gua, which you should bear in mind. While watching the video, briefly speaking, Tai He Yuan Qi is the Tai Chi imagery practice. For example, in my Tai Chi stepping video, I said, "Quote: 
In Tai Chi practice, the overall imagery to guide the style is the Zhong Yong concept through Tai He Yuan Qi imagery. To imagine that the body and its surroundings are full of energy during Tai Chi practice, and we become part of the harmonized energy without excessive effort. This is my definition of the Marco level imagery concept in Tai Chi overall practice. End quote. In today's video, I'd like to elaborate further. Chen Xin frequently used the term Tai He Yuan Qi in his Tai Chi book. He was the first person to apply this term to Tai Chi practice with detailed practical explanations. So, any discussion of Tai Chi imagery would be incomplete without mentioning Tai Chen Xin's contribution. I have talked about Chen Xin and his contribution in many prior Tai Chi videos. I recommend you check those out. Again, I cannot emphasize enough that no matter what style of Tai Chi you practice, understanding Chen Xin's written works will do wonders to your practice. Chen Xin used the term Tai He Yuan Qi to express the Tai Chi experiences of a practitioner rather than Marco level imagery. I prefer to use Tai He Yuan Qi as a Tai Chi imagery because this term reflects the Tai Chi spirit and guiding principle rather than an experience, which I will explain in the next section. Now, let me introduce Tai He Yuan Qi according to Chen Xin's writing. <coughs> Chen Xin said, quote, Xiong Zhong Yi Tuan Tai He Yuan Qi, Chong Zhou Si Ti, Zhi Rou Zhi Gang, Shi Bei Gan Jian, Kun Shun Zhi De, Dang Qi Jing Ye, Yan Yang Gong Cun, Wu Ji Ke Xun, Qi Qi Dong Ye, Kan Si Zhi Rou, 其实至刚，看似至刚，其实至柔，刚柔皆具，是谓阴阳合德。End quote. Translation: The Tai He Yuan Qi in the body extends to limbs. It reaches the state of ultimate flexibility and ultimate strength, which contains the virtue of strength and flexibility. When it settles. Yin and Yang coexist without any trace. When it becomes dynamic, <clears throat> it seems to reach the ultimate flexibility, but it is ultimately strong indeed. This is the apparent Yin and Yang merging with virtue. End translation. <clears throat> so, according to Chen Xin, Tai He Yuan Qi is the energy in the body that moves as the martial power in Tai Chi practice. Chen Xin expressed that Tai He Yuan Qi is the Tai Chi experience or feeling. For example, he said, quote, Zhou Shen Zhi Jin Wang Wai Fa Zhe, Jie Fa Yu Dan Tian, Xiang Li Shou Zhe, Jie Shou Yu Dan Tian, Ran Jie Yi Xin Zai Zhi. 处处皆见太和元气之相。End quote. Translation: The power that expands outward is from the Dantian. The power that gathers inward is from the Dantian. However, they are both controlled by the mind, and then you will experience the Tai He Yuan Qi everywhere. End translation. So he also attributed Tai He Yuan Qi as an experience or feeling. Chen Xin used Tai He Yuan Qi to describe the feeling of internal power. He said, "Quote: Xiong Zhong Nei Jin, ru Tai He Yuan Qi zhuan quan." End quote. Translation: Internal martial power in the body is like Tai He Yuan Qi making circles. End translation. Chen Xin also defined internal energy as simply a moving Tai He Yuan Qi in some parts of his book.
Furthermore, there are many other similar examples in his writings. So, overall, Chen Xin describes Tai He Yuan Qi as a result of a mental state, moving energy power, nature of internal energy, martial experience, and so on. I define Tai He Yuan Qi as the energy experience in a Zhong Yong state during practice involving mental state, body structure, subtle movement, breathing pattern, energy flow, energy sensation, and martial intent. To reach this level, you need to apply Tai He Yuan Qi as an overall Marco level Tai Qi imagery. So, Tai He Yuan Qi, originally a philosophical concept about primordial energy, was gradually adopted in many Chinese arts, including internal martial arts. Being from its original meaning, which went beyond the term energy used in Tai Chi, the term Tai He Yuan Qi gradually evolved to become a guiding principle for Tai Chi imagery. That should make the difference between Tai Chi imagery and Xing Yi and Ba Gua imageries abundantly clear. Tai Chi imagery can be very abstract, but that should not hold us back from practicing it. Now, let's look at how to actually practice Tai Chi imagery in the next topic. Topic 3 Practice of Tai Chi imagery. Tai He Yuan Qi has evolved a lot over the centuries. Originally a Chinese philosophical term used for explaining metaphysics, later adopted in Chinese arts with continued adoption by Chen Xin in the description of Tai Chi practice. Finally, to the current day where I attribute it as a Tai Chi imagery guiding principle. Of course, the ancient concept is great, but we should also remember that its meaning has evolved over the years and nothing should stop us from developing and evolving it even further. That's how art and practice can move forward. To practice Tai Chi imagery, you need to understand that applying the imagery concept in practice should go beyond mere physical movements and even beyond the internal sensation. However, it should start from a neutral state and that's why all of the great Tai Chi practitioners emphasized the importance of the Tai Chi preparation form. According to the Tai Chi classics, preparation is the starting point of cultivating Tai Chi energy. Tai He Yuan Qi as an imagery practice should start from the preparation form. During practice, you should always pay attention to the relationship between your overall body structure and your internal energy. At an advanced level, your internal energy should support your body structure instead of you utilizing your body structure to smoothen your internal energy even in the beginning. So, focus on your internal energy flow along with the coordination between your internal energy flow and the corresponding body structure and the movement is a great way to cultivate internal energy. Also, it is worth noting that maintaining a good Tai Chi posture is very important in Tai He Yuan Qi imagery practice. Both Zhong Yong or constant mean and Zhong Zheng or balanced body structure are important. Zhong Zheng is the key concept in Tai Chi practice. My prior video titled Internal Style Concept 31 Li Shen Zhong Zheng Body Straightness introduces the importance of body straightness or Li Shen Zhong Zheng. Link is in the description. Bear in mind, there is an interesting concept, Xie Zhong Yu Zheng or straightness in a leaning motion. Briefly speaking, the straight motion reflects Li Shen Zhong Zheng even in a leaning posture. Take a look at 
those photos. The first photo is Wu Jianquan, Wu Style Tai Chi founder. The second photo is of Yang Chengfu, creator of the big frame Yang Style Tai Chi. The third photo is of Tian Xiu Chen, one of the most important students of Chen Fa Ke. These are just some of the most noteworthy examples. All of those photos demonstrate the concept of Xie Zhong Yu Zheng. I will demonstrate it in the demonstration section. According to Chen Xin, experiencing Tai He Yuan Qi requires you to master the Tai Chi practice so well that there is no blockage in your body, or else you will not be able to experience Tai He Yuan Qi. In other words, Tai He Yuan Qi is the result of a natural and smooth internal energy flow and should be practiced by paying attention to the smallest details. To summarize, utilizing Tai He Yuan Qi as a Tai Chi imagery practice and adjusting the whole body internally as well as externally, physically as well as mentally. Will enable you to experience Tai He Yuan Qi. <clears throat> now, let's look at some important principles of Tai He Yuan Qi in the next topic to solidify your understanding of an advanced as well as abstract topic. Topic 4 <clears throat> Principles of Tai Chi Imagery. <clears throat> in today's video, I'd like to introduce two important Tai Chi imagery principles. First, Tai He Yuan Qi Dao Jing Shi, Bu Jing Bu Jian Dong Zhi Qi. Translation To practice Tai He Yuan Qi, you should start practicing from static. Without static, you will not experience the power of a dynamic. This is the direct quote from Chen Xin's book. So, the overall Tai Chi imagery practice should remain neutral but begin from a static state, and always return to a static state after each section of a routine. For example, there are 83 sections in the first routine of Chen Style Tai Chi. There should be a static state between any two consecutive sections. Or which is the time to internalize the Tai He Yuan Qi. So, going forward, you should not neglect the small pulsing parts in the Tai Chi routine. Second, mind handles imagery. Any practice of internal martial art should begin with the mind. Tai He Yuan Qi is no exception. Furthermore, the experience and the practice of Tai He Yuan Qi relies on the mind. It does not imply an intensive mental focus, but a rather neutral state of mind during practice, which is the core concept of the word mind in Tai Chi practice. Throughout your Tai Chi practice, your body structure should maintain a neutral state in accordance with Tai He Yuan Qi, with the only exception being movements involving Fa Jin, where the body needs to momentarily build tension. I will introduce more principles of Tai Chi imagery practice in the future. Now, let's clarify a couple of misperceptions. Topic 5 Misperceptions of Tai Chi imagery. Clarification of misperceptions of a concept is just as important as explaining the concept itself. Today, I will clarify two of the most important misperceptions about Tai Chi imagery. Those are first, Tai Chi routine practice should be as soft as possible in order to obey the Tai He Yuan Qi concept. Second, Tai Chi imagery should utilize some animal imagery practice since there are some movements in the Tai Chi routine named after animals. Now, let me clarify them one by one. 
First, Tai He Yuan Qi concept should be applied in Tai Chi practice so that the form should be as soft as possible. This is a very common mistake and the major reason behind the poor average quality in Tai Chi practice today. Tai Chi practice should not be soft, but instead it should be flexible and relaxed, not at all the same as being soft. Chen Xin's Tai Chi book contains a very popular proverb quote, Wai Shi An Shu, Nei Gu Jing Shen. End quote. Translation Be tranquil externally, strengthen the spirit internally. End translation. It tells us the importance of a calm external appearance combined with internal strength, which reflects the nature of Tai He Yuan Qi. It says nothing about softness. So, it's important to maintain balance between the internal and external aspects. Second, Tai Chi imagery should utilize some animal imagery practice since there are some movements in the Tai Chi routine named after animals. This is another huge mistake. Yes, there are some Tai Chi movements named after animals such as Chue Di Long or Dragon on the Ground, and so on. Animal imagery in Tai Chi is only applicable at the micro level in terms of guiding specific movements. Animal imagery cannot serve as a general guiding principle in Tai Chi. At the macro level, it is the Tai He Yuan Qi that serves as a general guiding principle in Tai Chi practice. So, do not get confused between micro level and the macro level imagery in Tai Chi practice. Those were two of the most common misperceptions along with their classifications. I will introduce some more in the future. <clears throat> Topic 6 Demonstration In today's demonstration, I'd like to demonstrate a Tai Chi concept, Xie Zhong Yu Zheng. Or straightness in a leaning motion. Well, think about this. In Tai Chi practice, we always emphasize the straightness of a body structure. However, the difference between a leaning posture and straightness is not only due to the physical structure, but more importantly, at an advanced level, the upper body has a slight leaning motion while still possessing the straight energy extending upward. Another example of a Tai He Yuan Qi. Case in point, the movement Bei Zhe Kao in Chen style first routine, in other words, a leaning body structure with straight motion is called Xie Zhong Yu Zheng. Also, the leaning posture has an upward and expanding motion which ensures a straight energy approach. Let me demonstrate it. Okay, let me demonstrate two of the situation of the body straightness. The first one is like this, okay? So it's for example like from here. One, then two, straight. But the second type of the leaning motion in the straight body structure is like this. The same thing. One, then two. So slightly leaning motion, but still energy is extending upward. This is called Xie Zhong Yu Zheng, leaning motion in the straightness. Topic seven: Take aways. First. Tai Chi imagery relies more on Confucianism than Taoism. There are three levels of imagery in Tai Chi practice, macro level, middle level, and micro level. Second, Tai He Yuan Qi is the Tai Chi imagery at the macro level. It is totally different and much more abstract compared to the imagery used in Xing Yi and Bagua. Third, Tai He Yuan Qi 
originally a philosophical concept about primordial energy was gradually adopted in many Chinese art, including internal martial art. Fourth, I define Taihe Yuan Qi as the energy experience in a Zhong Yong state during practice involving mental state, body structure, subtle movement, breathing pattern, energy flow, energy sensation, and martial intent. Fifth, Tai He Yuan Qi is the result of a natural and smooth internal energy flow and should be practiced by paying attention to the smallest details. Six principles of Tai Qi imagery. First, Tai He Yuan Qi Dao Jing Shi Bu Jing Bu Jian Dong Zhi Qi. Translation: To practice Tai He Yuan Qi, you should start practicing from static. Without static. You will not experience the power of a dynamic. Second, mind handles imagery. Seventh, misperceptions of a Tai Chi imagery. First, Tai Chi routine practice should be as soft as possible in order to obey the Tai He Yuan Qi concept. Second, Tai Chi imagery should utilize some animal imagery practice since there are some movements in the Tai Chi routine named after animals. Remember, both of these are misperceptions and should be avoided. Remember to check out the demonstration section to get an idea of how to use Tai Chi imagery in your practice. That brings us to the end of today's video. Quick reminder to send me your questions for the next week's Q&A video. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.